Okay, so welcome back. A couple days ago, I posted a video where I provided a challenge for people who are interested in learning how to um, think about problems and do like an engineer does and kind of design a solution uh, rather than like most people do, just copy and paste uh, code they find on the internet and think they understand it. Um, the challenge was what you see here, which is fairly, looks fairly simple. And the problem was to take these sets of numbers, these pairs of numbers, and develop a diagram like this. And these pairs of numbers were describing lines between buses. For example, this was a line between bus 1 and bus 2, bus 1 and bus 5, and so on. So here's 1 and 2, and then 1 and 5. So the challenge was to develop an algorithm that you could later turn into code and figure out what turns out to be a fairly complex algorithm, and there's a lot to consider for what seems like a very simple problem. I originally thought that I would post the challenge and then wait a week or two uh, in case there were some people who were actually interested in learning and would actually try the challenge and see if they come up with a solution and post it. Um, right after I thought that, the rational me said there's no way that anybody is going to do this. Um, people come on the internet for entertainment. You know, they come on to play video games or to watch something like PewDiePie or some nonsense like that. So it's very, very rare that anybody has the slightest interest in actually learning science and engineering. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you my approach to finding an algorithm to solve this. So at the end of the last video, we said, what algorithm would you use to make this happen? Now, what I'm going to talk about is one approach that I generally use to solve issues like this, engineering problems. Again, I've been an engineer, electrical engineer, for over 45 years, and we are often faced with challenges, difficult challenges that we have to figure out solutions to, and it's just not just a matter of copying code. You actually have to figure out how to get an answer. So the first thing I look at is, okay, what do I actually need? In this case, since it's software, what is the output I want from the software? If it's an engineering problem, it could be something different. But in the end, what am I trying to get here? What am I trying to accomplish? The next thing is, what do I know? In the case of software, we've got some input data that gives you some information. And we have to do something like in this case, we have to take that input data and do something with it. However, there's more than just input data. Often there's other things that you can find out that will help you solve the problem. So basically the inputs, the outputs, plus other things. So what else? The other thing that is really important and it can help you quite a bit, what are my constraints? By constraints, I mean, what are some rules that you shouldn't break? And we saw, talked about some of those previously. But also constraints can help you. They can limit how much work you have to do because, hey, you don't have to worry about that. And you can come up with stuff on your own to limit the size of the problem. Say only you need to focus on a certain area. So it's really important that you think about constraints and see if you can develop your own to help you solve the problem. And at the end of the day, in the software world, computers only talk in terms of numbers, ones and zeros. So at the end of the day, we're going to have to put numbers to everything. A lot of people like to use vague generalities, but in the science engineering software world, you can't do that. You've got to actually define things in terms of actual numbers. So these are the things we're going to consider when we look at developing an algorithm for this. So the first thing, what do I need? Actually, at the end of the day, there's not a lot of information I need to get a solution. So for example, we, we talked about buses the vertical lines. Um, in order to define the bus, all we need is a vertical line length. Like you see down here, we're going to draw a vertical line to represent a bus. So we need to know what the vertical line length and also the horizontal position on the diagram. Where are we going to put it? So we need to get this horizontal position and the vertical length. With the lines, it's very similar. However, as you see here, it's horizontal length and vertical position. So really, there's only two numbers we need for each component to figure out where to place it. So it should be pretty simple, right? Well, there's more to it. So here is our diagram. We need the vertical length, like you see in the bus here, is a very long line. This one is a shorter line. This one is a longer line. 
we need to know the length and the horizontal position. Where horizontally do we place these vertical lines? Same thing with the lines. We need to know the length and where do we put them vertically. So now what do I know? Well, we have this input data, so we're going to have to figure out what we can extract from that data for good, useful information. Well, we know the number of lines. Each pair of numbers is one line, so we can just count up one, two, three, four, five, six lines. And we can also find out the number of buses. We've got a bus number one, two, three, four, five. So we've got five buses. Also, we can use a little bit of logic to figure out how many lines are connected to each bus, and that's going to be important. So, for example, bus number one appears one, two times, so there's two lines on that bus. Bus number three appears one, two, three times, so there's three lines on that bus, and we can use that information later. So, these are some things we know. However, there's other things that we should know about that can help us solve the problem. So it's not just the input data, it's what else you know, what other experience you have. So that's going to be really important. And then what are my constraints? We talked about before, we don't want lines to cross over buses. So for example, you see a line here terminating on this bus and then another line going out to the right. However, we don't want this to be a line that is crossing over this bus and not terminating because it'd be very confusing. So we don't want the lines to cross over the bus which means we're going to have to do placement to make sure that doesn't happen. We also can think separately about how we can lay this out, and we might want to consider have the lines and buses constrained to what we can call fixed lanes and columns. Basically, we can implement a grid that defines locations a lot easier, and we can fit the lines and buses into those lanes and columns. So this is a case where we can add a constraint to make our life easier. And then another thing we can notice here, the bus length, the length of the line we draw, depends on the number of lines on the bus and their position. So for example, there, this bus here, there are two lines terminating on the bus, one to the left, one to the right. However, the bus length, because one's coming in, one's going out, can be short. However, in this case, it has to be longer. There's still two lines, but they're both coming from the left. So we have to make room, which means a longer bus. So the bus length depends on the number of lines on the bus and their position, where they're coming from. So these are things we need to keep in mind. So now we've got um, some more information. Here is our diagram. And what I've done is I've drawn what we call lanes and columns. So the vertical dashed lines are columns, and the horizontal dashed lines define lanes. So here we've got on the top, we've got a lane. These first two horizontal lines is a lane, and the, the line between the buses is in the middle of that lane. We can do the same for this next lane, and here we've got one, two, three, four lanes. And we've got one, two, three, four, five columns. So adding that constraint allows us to do a couple things. First of all, it makes everything look a little bit nicer, and it makes things uniform, and we can define everything in terms of these lanes and columns that are fixed values. It will help us to lay this stuff out into a nice grid. So in our algorithm, we're going to think about implementing something like that. So at this point, based on what we just discussed, here is a first shot and an algorithm we can use to make this all happen. We can arbitrarily choose a bus with the most number of lines and place it on the left side of the diagram. So for example, here on the far left, we've got a bus with two lines. Here on the far right, we've got a bus with three lines. To make things a little bit easier, we might move that bus with a lot of lines here to the left and we'll see in a bit, it might make our life a little bit easier. So that's a constraint we can add. And again, we can define fixed lanes and columns based on the number of elements. So we're going to have to calculate how many lanes and columns, but we can implement that fairly easily. We also would like to get the number of lines coming in from the left and right side of each bus, like you see here, because it will help us determine the length of the bus. So now let's start trying to implement what we have so far in the algorithm and see how it works. 
Well, here's our diagram. And as we said, we want to first start by taking one of the buses with the most number of lines and moving it over to the left. Um, if we look, uh, bus one is only two lines, two has two lines, three has one, two, three lines, four has two lines, and five has one, two, three lines. So what we're going to do is start out by moving five over to the left. And here's what we get. We've got five on the left. We've defined some lanes. We've got one, two, three, four lanes and one, two, three, four, five columns. And now let's start placing lines based on the input data. So if we look for the lines coming out of bus five, there should be three. We've got from one to five, three to five, and four to five. So what we can do is we can right away place buses one, three, and four and draw the lines. And now we've accomplished much of the diagram. So we draw bus number one, bus number three, bus number four, and draw lines from bus five. And you can see we've got now three lines already done. We've only got three left. So that is kind of a brute force way to do it. And we may look at this in a bit when we optimize it to say, you know, instead of just randomly drawing buses and lines, we should look at this data and see what else we can determine from this data that will help us better decide where to put the buses and the lines. So for example, bus number three, we're showing a line from five to three. However, we see here that bus three has one, two, three lines, but we've made it now so it can only fit one more line and only have two lines total. So um, we're going to have to think about when we do this with our final logic, maybe we can plan things a little bit better. So we think about where we're going to draw these first. But given that, let's take a look at the other lines and see how we can do it. So we've got a line between bus one and bus two. We've already drawn one. We haven't drawn two, which means we can draw two wherever we want. And since one is here and we want a line from one to two, it makes sense that we would put it somewhere in this lane and you can just draw a line and you're done. Well, we could put bus two here, except that's not going to be good because if we draw a bus here, it's going to meet up with this three bus and we're going to think we have one continuous bus and that's going to be bad. So the next thing we can do is we can put it over here and draw a line and that could be good. Um, I'm going to choose to put it way over on the right and see how that works out. So now we've put the bus way over here, drawn a line in this lane, and now we've only got two more lines and buses to configure. So the next one is a, a line from bus two to bus three. So here's bus three. Bus two is here. All we have to do is extend bus two, and then we can draw the line. So we extend bus two and draw the line, and now we're down to only one more line and we're all set. So this is from three to four. Now we got a problem. As we talked about before, if we had thought ahead, we would have realized, hey, I need to draw one more line out of three that goes to four, but I can't extend my three bus because there's a line in the way. So we're going to have to think about how we can do this. Luckily, we've got another lane down here so we can just move things down and extend bus three. So what we do is we extend bus three, extend bus four, and just move that line from five to four down here. And now we're pretty much all set. We've got all the lines covered. So that's one way to do it. That's kind of a general view of the logic. Again, when we finalize this, we're probably going to want to think ahead a little bit. But now we've got things a little bit easier to figure out. We've got specific places to put the lines in the buses. And we've got some basic idea about the algorithm. So now this bus one is in lane one and column one. Assuming this far left bus is in column zero, it's lane one, column one. This bus three is in lane two and three and column two and so on. So now we have to find for each bus where it is horizontally in which column is it and also how long is it by how many lanes it takes up. So now we've got a little bit better idea about the algorithm. We can say, okay, I need to calculate lines per bus because that's going to determine how long the bus is. And I can arbitrarily choose a bus with the most number of lines and place it on the left side of the diagram. 
And then I can define fixed lanes and columns based on the number of elements. And all of this is pretty straightforward. We can write code right now to do it pretty much. And we can see that each bus is going to have lane and column properties. What column is it in? And what lanes is it occupying? And we're going to need some logic to define the total number of columns and number of lanes in the diagram based on the number of lines and number of buses. In our case, we've got five buses and six lines. So that allows us to determine how many columns and how many lanes. We're also going to need some logic to place the buses and lines in predefined lanes and columns. Now, we've got constraints. The bus length can't extend into occupied lane. Again, this bus, we can't extend it into this occupied lane. Different buses can't occupy the same column in adjacent lanes because it merges buses. As we showed before, uh, we couldn't put bus 2 here because it's going to merge with 3 and it's going to be one big bus. Also, the bus length for two lines is either one or two lanes. For three lines is either two or three lanes, and so on. If I've got two lines coming into this bus, I'm only taking up one lane. However, the same number of lines coming into bus two, I'm taking up two lanes. So we're going to have to have some logic to determine that so we can figure out how long the bus is and what lanes is occupying. So now in the next video, we're going to start implementing these algorithms and fine-tuning them and putting them into code with an application like you see here. And here I've got a um, picture box with a bitmap and I've started to draw the buses and these dashed lines are of course the lanes and the columns. And I've got a text box that is giving us some feedback summarizing some of the data that we've calculated. It tells us what the lines are how many lines per bus, total number of buses, number of lines, the leftmost bus, and so on. And in the next video, we're going to start to look at how we can write the code for what we've designed so far, which makes it so much easier to write code because we've basically put together the specific logic that we can convert into lines of code. So that's it for this one. If you like any of these videos, I encourage you to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notifications. But most of all, please let others know that we're here so we get some views. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, take care. Have a really good day. Thanks.